Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is gonna be part two of our restoration series on an F30 BMW. As you had seen in the beginning of the video, the paint turned out amazing. The majority of this video is gonna be covering detailing and getting the car into that condition. Joel from Raleigh Motorsports is gonna be covering the details with regards to how to restore your paint and trying to leave out no details because we have done this once before in a five series and some people commented that they felt like there was stuff missing. We're gonna do our best here to give you as much detail as possible. You'll see the mechanical restoration and time lapse, including suspension, brake, transmission, stuff that had to be done to make sure the car is gonna be reliable for the new owner. And speaking of the new owner, the car are sold before I had a chance to list it. So I'll be cutting over to Joel from Raleigh Motorsports to kick off the paint restoration. Hey everyone, Joel from Raleigh Motorsports back again. We are almost complete with the mechanical on this 328i. We've got the timing chain done, we've got the turbo in, we've been driving it around, we've got the new coils, plugs in, new air filter. So all that is complete. We got a few more things to button up, but now we're gonna see how we can make this thing look. Okay, now we're walking around the car. So my biggest concern is this area on the hood right here. That is pretty rough. So that's my biggest concern. Uh, the other area of concern is down here. Yeah, you can see that. The paint looks like it got scuffed up, pretty worn on the trunk deck lid. And then there's some scuffs right here but the sides look pretty good so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wash it with foam cannon i have some brushes we're going to get all the little nooks and crannies here so i can do that that's part of being able to do the paint correction so after we get it washed then we'll go ahead and do the iron remover and the clay bar and because it's kind of so rough i'm going to use the chemical guys heavy duty clay bar the black one and i'll show you all that but first i'm going to show you the efficiency tricks if you go to home depot you can get these they're quick connects and i have some down here on the bottom and i'll move the camera in a second it makes it awesome for filling up buckets because the pressure washer just does not do well to fill up buckets of soap if you want to disconnect it from the hose you have to disconnect it and then you got to get water going through it again and it just takes a bunch of time so i'll show you this quick time saver if you want to go quickly between your hose and uh, the pressure washer all you have to do is just push in, pull back, come in, push that on. We'll put our soap in for our sponge. Not hiding any secrets, you can watch the whole bucket fill up. When you're done, disconnect, put back in, ready to go. That's today's trick. They're in Home Depot and I think they're seven bucks. Saves a ton of time, but now we'll go ahead and get the uh, foam cannon loaded all up and we'll get started on getting this car washed. Okay, so before we even foam cannon, we'll give the car a really good rinse and then I'll spray uh, the wheels down with some wheel cleaner. Okay, now we'll take off the front and rear license plate. First, we'll go ahead and spray our wheels. Okay, so the next step is spraying small areas around the headlights, bumpers, grill, rear view mirrors, in the trunk area, the fuel door, and get those little areas first, and then we'll come around and get the big areas with the sponge. Okay, that went through the whole thing of soap. Now, see my suds kind of went away. So now's one of those times that I can do a quick swap and fill up and get good, nice suds and a lot of water. Oh, it feels like sandpaper. Musa has instructions to edit out as much bald spot and plumber's crack as he can. So it looks like I'm losing the race against sunlight. So I will have to turn the car around to do the other half of iron remover. After that, there's really not that much that, I mean, I can clay in the sun. Rinse cycle. Okay, the next step is we're gonna do iron remover. Because we're starting to lose our shade, I'm just gonna do this half of the car, and then I'll turn the car around and do the other half. This will remove any metal impurities uh, that are on, that are stuck to the clear coat. And when it activates, it turns purple. 
Also, with the iron remover, it's really important to rinse, rinse, rinse because, like I said, it turns red when it activates, when it has the interaction with any metal. And if you don't rinse it off while it's still wet, it will be a nightmare to get the little tiny red dots because they dry in little red dots. Okay, now we can go ahead and start rinsing the front where we started. Okay, so we did the wash, we did the iron remover, and now we're on to the clay bar treatment. You didn't miss anything. I just uh, put the car in and filled up the bucket, new bucket with soap, did the switch over between the, the hose handle and the pressure washer, and now we're gonna do the clay bar. I took a razor blade and I cut one third of a heavy duty clay bar from Chemical Guys, and now we'll get started. So, first thing you wanna do is you wanna knead the clay into a pancake, and then obviously if you drop it it's done that's why you cut it into thirds so if you have any issues it's no big deal so we're gonna go you're just gonna go uh, in a forward and sideways cross shape X shape whatever you want to call it into uh, get all the contaminants off the paint and then we'll go ahead and back it out and rinse it and then we'll bring it back in and dry it and then we can start with the uh, wet sanding and paint correction You use the soap, the soapy water to act as a lubricant, and then you'll just wanna go back and forth until it's smooth. And I don't know if it's coming through on the mic, but you can, when I first start, you can hear how rough it sounds, and then it starts to quiet down and smooth out. So moments like this, when you're down here, trying to get these little areas, that's when you're gonna be most prone to drop the clay. And if you do, it's just life goes on and get a new one. Don't reuse it because there's little rocks in there. It's gonna really give you nightmares. Now, another thing to point out is Hopefully you could see how many times I'm going over this until it feels good. And there's a difference between doing a clay bar and doing a clay bar until it's all the way clean. If you just go over it like once, there's still some stuff in there that would be better to get. So make sure you're doing it by feel. I'll get the side skirts and then the windows last. You'll see that the, the, the doors aren't that bad. It's normally the horizontal paint surfaces, deck lid, hood, roof, because the pollen just gets to sit on there and it's e much easier for it to stick. I will only use this clay bar once on this car and then it's pretty much done. Okay, so now we are complete with the wash, with the iron remover, and with the clay bar. And now I'm gonna let this dry for a few hours, and then I'll come back when it's cooler, and we'll wet sand that spot on the hood and the trunk, and then we will get to polishing the rest of the car, and you will get to see all of that. Uh, we have done the cutting on the side of the car because that really wasn't that bad, and on the roof, and what I, I know, I was hiding my secrets. What we're really focused on here, we say, it for you is the hood, the trunk lid, and the red paint on that bumper. We've washed, we've done the iron remover, we've clayed. Uh, there's not much material there to work with, so I have a interface pad with the Rupus here. So this interface pad provides a little bit of cushion, so when you go around the contours like on the hood, it is less likely to have burn through, so. I'm gonna move real fast because I don't wanna burn through anywhere. I'm looking for paint. Now, the look that it has when it's wet like this is what you should be able to get the finished product to. Do you gotta get shot? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. 
This is 2000. Oh, okay. Okay, wet sanding is done. I just blew out the pad. I put a little bit more polish on it, and now we're gonna do uh, the next step after the wet sand. Okay, that looks pretty good. That is a deep scratch that won't come out. And then there's a little bit right here we can see but I don't want to dig too deep into the paint. I'm just going to go out here because I don't want to get on the camera, but you're just going to turn the polisher on and then blow out all of the material that's in here. Now this time I'm going to blow this out and then I'm going to go over the deck lid one more time without putting additional polish on. I think that's as good as we're gonna get it, but it looks pretty good. Once we do the fine polish and the ceramic coat, it'll be really difficult to see those. The next day, we've got the hood complete with the cutting and the wet sanding. Uh, this has been wet sanded, but there's a little bit of red right here still left that wasn't able to get with the orbital. So I'm just gonna fold this little piece of 2000 grit and just come in here by hand and just see if I can get the rest of it off. It's a little distorted right here because it got tapped in the back as well. We'll get you a close up of this so you can see how we did. You can see it's many times better. I'll tell you what that, how good enough that is. That's good enough that you just leave it like that until some moron is texting on their phone and rear ends you and then you just get it all fixed then. So that takes care of the cutting except for the front. So I'm gonna hit that. Okay, all the cutting steps have been completed. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with the polish with our fine polish. So we'll get our new pad and our fine polish. And then we have to go through the priming process. So we'll shake up the bottle and we're gonna rub that in. Okay, now that we've gone through the trouble of rubbing that in thoroughly, we're just gonna go blow it all out right now. Okay, now we have our pad properly primed. We have our fine polish. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over all the spots uh, except for the front bumper and the rear bumper and the sides. I have my Nano that I'm gonna use for that. It's just you wanna use this, the large pad as much as you can for time savings, that's all. So we'll get started. The good part about the polish is that it won't take as much material, as much clear coat off, not nearly as much, so you won't have to blow it out nearly as much or clean it nearly as much. So we'll get the whole half of the hood done and then we'll buff it off with the microfiber and see how it looks. Okay, y'all, we've got about half the car done. Time for me to take my daughters to soccer and another one's got a pool party, whatever. But I'll be back when it's not 90 degrees out and we'll finish up the right side 
and then I'll get the Nano out to get the last little bits. And then the car will need another good wash and then we'll do the ceramic coating. Okay, so we've done some work off camera because spoiler alert, this car sold already. But as you can see, brand new shocks in the front. We put a brand new transmission pan, original ZF, and did a flush and fill. You would have seen this on the time lapse, but brand new brakes in the rear, pads and rotors. And then you have brand new suspension in the rear, brand new shocks. So we're about to take the car for a test drive after putting the new suspension and brakes and whatnot to see how it feels. So we'll catch up in the car and we'll get, and you'll get our impressions. So we usually talk about blown shocks in terms of percentages. If you want to know what a 0% shock looks like, this would be it right here. When you hear a clunk at the end of it all, that's probably a bad sign and it doesn't move. When we pushed on the car, you could actually hear it leaking fluid just on an up and down push, not on the road. So we knew it was completely cooked. All right, so this is the maiden voyage after fresh suspension and new brakes, at least serviced in the front. All right, that will conclude this video. Thank you for watching. If you were interested in a car like this and you felt like you would have liked to have been able to have a chance to buy the other car, I can tell you that this 2013 with 97,000 miles is getting a full engine rebuild. When I say full rebuild, I really mean it. All new pistons, OEM rod bearings. So this car is gonna be getting the full treatment. It's gonna have a rebuilt turbo. It's gonna have a completely brand new engine when we're done with it. Transmission's only got 97,000 miles. It's gonna get service. We're gonna do all the suspension any wear and tear items that are not going to make this car last uh, hopefully a couple hundred thousand miles. So if you like the way we restore these cars and you want something that's going to be turnkey and driving like a new car when it's done, you can shoot me an email. I'll put my email in the description if you want to put a deposit on this and lock it down. If you guys are wondering what this will go for, it's going to be maybe in the 13 grand range, which is right within the range of what these are worth. But the miles, if they're in excellent condition, this definitely will be in excellent condition. It's gonna be fully restored. So if this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing. If you liked it, please give it a like, so rank higher. Thanks for watching.